How's it going, everybody? Uh, my name is Preston, and I'm going to be talking about the uh, new uh, Warlock changes that have come through. So today is May the 8th, Tuesday, so Tuesday, we got some new changes. Uh, this is on beta. Uh, date is important, so if you come viewing this video later, this information may not be relevant, obviously, since everything's going to change. Um, but this is a little closer to what we had uh, a few weeks ago with Soulfire and things like that. So, um, But the main thing we're adding with this patch is going to be the uh, PvP talents, and I'll just cr briefly cover those. It's pretty simple. Uh, basically, you have your big one at the top, and this one you choose uh, what type of honor medallion you want. Um, Something to note is uh, Relentless does not stack with similar effects, so uh, it looks like if you're an orc, you're probably just going to go Gladiator Medallion, you're not going to really stack it with Relentless or anything like that, so uh, rip on that. So basically, we're going. I'm just going to hit the, I'm going to use Tome real quick. Um, so the way this works is you pick any three, so there's a pool of talents here, these are, these may be placeholder, they may not be, um, but uh, Basically, these are the talents we had before, right? Uh, but instead of picking between them, we could pick... So I could pick Curse of Tongues, I could pick Curse of Fragility, and Curse of Weakness if I wanted to. Probably not necessary, obviously, but... Uh, you know, you could you could do that. So it's, it's kind of neat, the stuff you could do. So I could do something like... Um, Fell Lord with Observer with... Um, I don't know, Nether Ward, right? And so, Fell Lord and Observer gives you some really good area denial, in other words, nice for survivability. Um, but, you know, I heal for, I don't know, Fell Hunter or something. You know, it, it just lets you customize it a lot. It seems like it could be hard to balance, but, um, I don't know, I like, I like the system. I like to see more of it uh, as it develops. Anyway, uh, let's talk about class changes. So, first of all, um, if you haven't seen previous builds, I'll just cover it as if uh, this is brand new to you if you're coming from live. So on live we obviously have Demonic uh, Empowerment, that's gone. Doom is now a talent, it's not baseline anymore and it's been changed on how it works. Uh, but uh, before I get into talents and things like that, we're just going to cover baseline uh, abilities. So we have two shard spenders, we have or generators I should say. We have Shadow Bolt and we have Demon Bolt. Now, Demon Bolt has an extremely long cast time, and it generates two soul shards when cast. Shadow Bolt is going to be your filler, it has a short cast time, generates one. Similar to on live, uh, we don't have shadowy inspiration anymore, so there's no shenanigans going on with that. Now, uh, the mechanic we have is Demonic Core, so we still have called Dreadstalkers, we still have Hanigal Dan. Hanigal Dan is 1 to 3 instead of 1 to 4, so keep that in mind, you're just going to be spending... Three shards. Now I got a refund because I am running Soul Conduit right now, um, and Implosion is baseline as well. So that's going to be your main source of AOE. It's going to be Implosion. So on single target though, you're going to be running uh, Call Dreadstalkers on cooldown, filling with Shadow Bolt. And what you're going to see here is, and then I'm going to you know dump with uh, Hannibal Dan, is we have a mechanic called Demonic Core. So anytime one of my minions expires, I have a chance to gain Demonic Core. Now, Dreadstalkers have a 100% chance to do this, so you're always going to get that uh, mechanic. So basically, it can stack up to four times, and uh, it makes your next Demon Bolts instant cast. So they generate two shards, which is really good. So you can kind of end this instant cast, so you can do it on the move. So you can just do this. Now, this triggers when these run out. So I summoned a bunch of imps here, so hopefully, uh, you can see they have like 15 seconds left there. A couple of them ran out. Uh, I got a stack of Molten Core, so I can shoot it, get some more shards. Um, this plays into a nice, uh, as your imps are running out, you're able to summon more quickly. Uh, kind of interesting ramp up gameplay, which uh, Demonology has been sort of known for. Um, but like I said, if you don't like the RNG, so imps is a 10% chance per imp that expires, so if you have three imps, not exactly a 30% chance, uh, but it's 10% per imp that expires, right? So uh, keep that in mind. And then Dreadstalkers are always going to give you uh, two stacks because there's two of them. So, uh, yep. So uh, our mastery is still pretty much just the damage of all your demons. Uh, Soul Link is still Soul Link. So basically that's the basics. Now uh, our big cooldown is going to be Demonic Tyrant. 
Uh, they've changed this up a bit. It does still say Shadow Bolt Volley, but it more of like casts Hand of Gul'dan. It's not Hand of Gul'dan, but it, it shoots a bolt out at the target and it damages everything around that target uh, instead of um, it being uh, like 40 yard old school star Starfall shenanigans. So it's, it's nothing like that. Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much. Uh, oh, one more thing with the the pet. Uh, personally, I just kind of macro the abilities or keybind it. I don't really use the command demon ability. Um, the reason is that uh, you should use macros or keybind your pet's abilities. Is that if you're stunned or something, sometimes you can't hit the command demon ability. So it's better to just be able to use the abilities when you want to. But they've changed it from Fellstorm into Axe Toss. Uh, this is just to bring everything in line. They've changed a few of the pet's command demon ability basically into their utility spell rather than um, something else. So like if I switch to Imp real fast, it's uh, no longer Heal Self. It's now uh, Singe Magic, which actually, do they still have that? Uh, looks like they don't. Rip. <laughs> It wasn't. A, they have blood pack now, though, so they give you five percent more max health to your party, which is half of. Um, so party buffs are back. Um, if you don't have a priest, imp is uh, decent to have. Although demonology is kind of restricted in using the bell guard. So, all right. So let's go ahead and just get into talents. Uh, not waste any more time on that kind of stuff. So anyway, so the first row is basically pick an AOE type. Um, you have bile skirt bombers. Uh, Demonic Strength and uh, Dreadlash. Now, uh, just looking at these on paper, it looks like Dreadlash is going to be the go-to for single target. Um, potentially Demonic Strength, but probably not Bile Scourge Bombers. So Bile Scourge Bombers is basically just Rain of Fire on a 30 second cooldown. Um, it summons a bunch of Fell Bats that just Suicide Bomb. It looks really cool and it's nice. It's instant cast, which is really good because Demo Demonology doesn't have hardly any instant cast spells since there is the removal of life tap which i should have mentioned <laughs> earlier yeah life tap is gone for all warlock specs um your mana just you know you're not gonna have to worry about your mana it's just there and pointless um i honestly don't know why we still have it in this day and age on certain classes like this uh anyway so we do have uh, Dreadlash. So what does Dreadlash do? Basically, when you call your Dreadstalkers, their initial Dreadbite is going to do 25% increased damage and damage all enemies within 8 yards. So think of this like uh, Soul Cleave from Demon Hunter. It, it just basically uh, cleaves everything uh, when you summon them. Now, Demonic Strength. So this one's a really neat talent. It basically tells your fell. This is a button you put on your bar, on your bar, that tells your fell. Uh, your Felgar to do a Mega Whirlwind that does 400% increased damage. And from what I've been able to tell, you can tell him to do it and still tell him to do regular Felstorm on top of that because it just sort of... It's kind of like Demon Wrath in a way. It kind of puts the Whirlwind effect around him. I don't know if that's a bug, um, but it does an insane amount of AoE damage on a one-minute cooldown. Now, Bile Scourge Bombers does do a lot of AoE damage as well. Uh, it costs two soul shards, which is kind of bad, um, because you don't have Demon Wrath anymore, so you don't really have an AOE way of generating soul shards. So even on AOE, you're still gonna want to, you're still gonna be casting Shadow Bolt and Demon Bolt just to generate shards, and so two soul shards does kind of suck. Um, the majority of your AOE damage is gonna be coming from Hand of Gul'dan and Implosion, and even when you're using Vile Scourge Bombers, uh, Implosion is going to outdo that. Uh, and the fact that it costs two Soul Shards kind of means that, you know, that's two more Imps that could have exploded going into your Implosion. So it, it does suck that it costs two Soul Shards. It's a really cool spell, though. I'd like to see it uh, maybe buffed or even made baseline. I don't know. But um, anyway, so that's enough on that tier. So on the level 30 tier, we have Demonic Calling, Pyre, Siphon, and Doom. So Doom currently um, doesn't work the same way we've uh, seen it work in the past. Uh, currently on live, you can snapshot your haste with Doom uh, since its duration is equal to its tick timer and it's only got one tick. Uh, 
and on live you can refresh Doom uh, without losing any damage. Now, currently this could be a bug or this could be the intent. I'm not 100% sure on this. Uh, if I'll go ahead and, and talent into Doom real fast and just uh, drop it on my bar, uh, we'll see that if I hit it, uh, it's not going to do any damage for 30 seconds, even though I have haste. 18% haste that should have knocked it down at least a couple seconds, right? Now, if I uh, if I refresh this, it actually goes pretty much right back to where it was. Okay, so 26. So it does look like it is affected by haste, but you'll see that like I should have gotten my tick here in a couple seconds, but I'm not actually going to get it unless they've changed it today. I haven't actually tested it today, so we'll see. Uh, yeah, no, it's not happening. So basically. It happens once it expires, so you have to let it expire to get your damage to happen. Uh, it no longer generates a shard either, so it's pretty shit all around, to be honest with you. So, uh, I've been using Demonic Calling, um, simply because... So, Demonic Calling is similar to how it is on Live, where uh, it's Shadow Bolt and Team and Volt, so you're instant procs as well, which is nice. Uh, have a chance to make... Your 20% chance to make your next uh, call Dreadstalkers cost no shards, which is awesome. But it also makes it instant cast, which is uh, really awesome. So that's that's kind of the, the, the fact that it's instant cast is kind of what makes me take it over Power Siphon. So Power Siphon, you sacrifice up to two of your wild imps to generate two charges of demonic core, uh, which is very good and. Um, uh, with, some, with something like Nether Portal, which I'll talk to you about in a bit, uh, can really help you set up a thing. Now, because you get two soul shards out of a charge of Demonic Core, this is a good trade for two imps um, for two charges because you're thinking you're trading two imps for four imps. Because so so it is a better uh, big. It's an upgrade from from what you had. Uh, a lot of the damage breakdown is still from imp damage, so keep that in mind, but it's not as skewed as it used to be. Uh, your damage still matters uh, a lot. So, uh, level 45 tier, this is pretty much what was, I believe, the 75 tier. So, Demon Skin, Burning Rush, or Dark Pact. Uh, just a funny little note, they've, they've made Burning Rush, instead of changing icon, it now glows. So that should make it easier for some people who forget to turn Burning Rush off so they notice it <laughs> a little easier. Uh, I find that a little funny. Anyway, uh, level 60 tier, moving along. Um, from the shadows. Now, I like this talent a lot. Um, basically, when you call Dreadstalkers, uh, it causes the target to take 20% additional Shadow Flame damage from you for the next 12 seconds. Now, whenever you cast this on the target, the tooltip reads, from the Warlock. Now, the reason this is important is that uh, this counts Hannah Gul'dan, this counts Demon Bolt, this counts Implosion, uh, this counts Shadow Bolt, but it does not count Imp Firebolt damage, which is still a huge majority of your damage overall. Um, but just keep that in mind. So, so next to that, uh, so this is really good for... Um, you can combine this with Demonic Calling and this, get a lot of imps out and create a really good implosion combo, and this is very popular right now on uh, beta. Um, so, uh, next to it we have Soul Strike. This is on a 10 second cooldown, generates one Soul Shard when cast. Uh, it commands your Felguard to uh, strike the enemy for an amount of shadow damage. Uh, currently it's like no damage at all. Uh, 131 is pretty low, even on a 10 second cooldown. If you look at my Shadow Bolt, it's about about 900 damage on a one point sec, uh, you know. So it's it's kind of like I don't know. It, it feels a little weird to use, uh, but anyway. So summon Valfiend. This one's really good. It's basically just another minion for you to summon, uh, which can be buffed by the demonic tyrant. Uh, let me just. I didn't like the icon, so I macroed it. But <laughs> so uh, demonic tyrant is one minute. Uh, 1.5 minute cooldown. This is going to be one of the main things. So if you think on live, we have Valkyale's Consumption, which you want to line up with as many minions as possible. This is pretty similar. Basically, whenever you summon it, uh, it buffs your damage and all of your current minions' damage by 15% and extends all of the minions you have out's duration by 15 seconds. 
Um, and then basically the buff lasts about 15 seconds. So basically, as long as he's out, the minions you had out at that time won't go away. So if you have something like Summon Vile Fiend out, um, Grimoire of Surface is still a thing that's out. Uh, Doomguard and Infernal are removed. Uh, Infernal is destruction only, but so for demonology, they're removed. So if you have a bunch of really powerful minions out, you summon your Monarch Tyrant, they're all going to stay out. They're all going to do a lot more damage. Uh, it's basically your big cooldown. Uh, it's only on 1.5 minute cooldown, which is pretty nice. Uh, which means that you can use it on trash. You still have it up for a boss or something. Uh, you can use it a good number of times during a boss fight, during a raid encounter. Uh, it lines up nicely with 3 minute cooldowns, so you can have it up every other one. So, very, very cool. Uh, one thing I'll mention, so I am uh, a troll right now. Uh, they've put Berserking on the global cooldown. They've done this with the Orc Racial as well. Um, but there's a few other things that aren't on the global cooldown, so it's a little unclear. Uh, as far as everyone talking about global cooldowns, um, Unending Resolve is still off the global cooldown. So you don't really have to worry about it too much as a warlock. Uh, Alright, so Dark Fury, Molten Coil, and Demonic Circle. So Demonic Circle, they've changed this up slightly. Uh, not really. Honestly, I think the way they've done it is a little annoying. <laughs> I got, I, uh, it used to be one button, now it's two. It's pretty simple. You kind of macroed it into two buttons if you were smart. Um, truth of the matter is, is I'll probably still use my macro because you still have to cancel the buff off of your health or off yourself, so. So, uh, Shadow Fury is baseline for everybody. Dark Fury just reduces the cooldown. I think the talent, like, compared to Mortal Coil, I think Mortal Coil is better than Dark Fury because you're not, if you're still gonna have Shadow Fury, you know, unless you're, you know, Mythic Plus, you're, you might take it if you're, like, really need that many stuns. Um, but Mortal Coil you can use as an additional interrupt and you can use it to heal yourself. At the same time, which is pretty nice. So, personally, I think Mortal Coil is a little better. Uh, Demonic Circle, obviously, in, in a raid where you're going to be able to set it up, uh, it's going to be very useful, uh, especially on situations where it's like, oh, you could get knocked off, you can portal back up, that sort of thing. Uh, don't know what kind of fights we're going to be running into there, though. But I think, honestly, in my opinion, I think Dark Fury should make an instant cast if it's going to be up against um, these other talents. And you don't have any instant cast spells really as a demonology warlock anyway. So you have implosion, which um, you don't want to be doing unless like you're setting up a combo. Because implo losing your imps kind of sucks. It's not as bad as on live where implosion is like a definite no-no no matter what. But it's still not ideal. Um, and if you have you have your your procs from Demon Bolt, and you have demonic calling procs if you ta talent into it. And it's pretty much all you get for instant casts. You know, Summon Vile Fiend has a cast time. Uh, Grimmar Service can be instant cast as well. Um, uh, Summon Demonic Tyrant has a cast time as well. So every, you have a lot of cast times uh, as Demonology. Um, so you're pretty rooted to the ground. But to make up for that, you do do a ton of damage. So that's pretty nice. So moving along, we have Inner Demons, Soul Conduit, and Grimmar Service. I know we've talked on this before, but... On live, we use Grimoire Service all the time on Demonology because you can set up great combos. Um, it being next to Soul Conduit kind of means that it may or may not be the go-to. We don't know yet. Um, from what I can tell, you probably want to go Soul Conduit still. Uh, but it's hard to tell. We can't really tell right now without doing some serious like simming and, and that sort of things. Inner Demons seems bad. Uh, I, it's cool in concept, so basically, every 10 seconds, you will summon a wild imp, uh, and there's a 10% chance that you will summon an additional demon in, uh, in addition, right? Um, so what's funny about this talent is, uh, or what's cool about it is that this works out of combat, so you basically run into any, and it, and it summons up to three, because each one's, like, lasts about... 20 seconds, and then, you know, there's like a fall off by the time you get to the third imp, the, the one from before runs out, so um, you basically always have three imps out from this talent, and then you might summon additional minion as well. Um, 
that compared to Soul Conduit, though, it really depends on how good those other demons are. Like, they have to be really good. Uh, I don't know. Personally, I think Soul Conduit's still going to beat it out. Um, now, uh, now at the 100 tier, uh, we have some very interesting talents here. Some very, very interesting stuff. So, Sacrifice Souls. Uh, I've been using this for leveling. Uh, it may or may not be that viable. Now, like I said, your damage does matter a good bit. But still, the majority of your damage comes from your, your pets, right? Uh, I would say about... It, it's more of like a... It's like a 60-40 sort of deal. Like 40% from you, 60 from your minions. Uh, something like that. As opposed to live, where it's like... 90, <laughs> 10. <laughs> uh, but yeah, basically, every time you send a soul shard, your next shadow bolts or doom bolt. Basically, this this talent, if you upkeep it. So if I hit Hannibal Dan, Hannibal Dan right here, I get three stacks of it. Um, it, it caps at five, so you just want to kind of keep up with the the buff. And it says 25% extra demon bolt and shadow bolt damage. So as long as you keep up this debuff or this buff. You're gonna pretty much have it. If one use of Handle Dan or a couple uses of Handle Dan will bring it up to to full stacks, and you're just sitting at 25% increased um, Shadow Bolt and Demon Bolt damage, and that, that's that's basically how that talent works. Now, Demonic Consumption is very good, or it's very interesting. Now, like I said, a lot of your damage does come from Wild Imp Firebolts, right? So, but the Demonic Tyrant does a crap ton of damage. And what this talent does is when you summon him, he'll eat all of your current imps instead of empowering them, and he'll get bonus damage for every imp he consumes. Uh, I think it's like up to 45% increased damage. Um, and he hits like a truck. So if you pick this talent, he's gonna hit like a fucking train, you know? Like, it's gonna, it's gonna be crazy. Um, now the other one is Nether Portal. So this one is sort of like it's really hard to set up this is gonna be like your talent you choose on a raid fight with not much movement that you have a lust on pull and you want to like set up some crazy on pull damage that this is gonna be that talent so it requires three soul shards as a like above two second cast time three minute cooldown uh, Tear up, a, up in a portal, twisting nether. Every time you spend soul shards, you will also commit demons from the nether to come out and fight for you. So, setting this up, it's very difficult. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a tome, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna build for nether portal just to see how this works. So we're still gonna use soul conduit because it's every time we spend soul shards. So, all right, so let's grab. We'll grab the vile fiend. Um, I think, uh, let's grab Power Siphon as well, and then, yeah, that should be a decent build for it, so let's go ahead and just put these on the bar real quick, actually, we'll put him there. Alright, so let's go ahead and we'll just start, we'll set up for this and see how much we can do. So, we'll go ahead and grab our Dreadstalkers out, just opening up. So, we're going to build the full shards. We're going to get some imps out. Oh, I didn't put this on my bar, shit. <laughs> there we go. Alright, so we've got a bunch of these, so I'm just going to go ahead and pop everything right now. Gonna see how much we can get from the nether portal. So then we pop that at the end of it to buff any extra demons we got from the nether portal. You see, we have a lot of demons over there right now. And while all those imps are running out, we're gonna implode. <laughs> So 
So this one, it has a 45 second cooldown, which um, it does line up with some things. All right. So this does become... So compared to live, I would say this is a more, uh, a bit more engaging than live uh, in a number of ways. Uh, it does have some disadvantages compared to live. Like I said, you're very rooted into the ground, and the current live Demonology Warlock is very not rooted in the ground because you have things like um, Demon Wrath, Doom Refreshing you can do, Baseline, Life Tap, just, um, just things you can do on the move a lot easier uh, without having to rely on procs. However, I mean, this is how it should have been from the start, in my opinion. Like, this is how transitioning from using metamorphosis to a full summoner class this is how it should have been um, but uh, leveling as this has been very fun I've spent about I've, oh yeah so that's something I should mention if you just heard that uh, if you mog to your artifact weapon he does still talk so uh, I know other places have said that but I just wanted to go ahead and let you confirm that he seems to talk a lot less often than um, he does on live, uh, which is somewhat disappointing, and he won't get as many voice lines. Uh, there's not going to be new voice lines for the new dungeons, things like that. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, there's also a nice glitch you can do. Uh, I'll go ahead and show it, just in case it makes it to, to live. So, basically, you have to mog your offhand to the skull. Uh, you can mog your, you can have a wand or something else in your main hand that's not a dagger uh, and still have the offhand as um, I just happen to have a dagger and offhand right now. Uh, still have that. But this current bug right now, if I equip the staff, uh, he still hangs around. So basically if you had something, an offhand mog to it and then you equip a two-handed weapon, uh, it still keeps the skull floating around. Although if he's like this, uh, he won't talk, so that kind of sucks. Yeah, look at this guy. He's got he's got the demonic portal, and he summoned some eyes of Gul'dan. <laughs> so you can get some nice, interesting uh, minions from that. So random minions can literally look like anything. Uh, I think one time I summoned um, not not Archimon, but like one of those those big Eridars, and he had the voice line. <laughs> It was like, oh, it was Prince, what's his name? Ah, I forget. But yeah, and they'll have a lot of the voice line. I hope that does make it in the live, just because that'll be um, really funny. Um, uh, just to cover some AoE, so just to show you what I meant. So like, you still, so this is the AoE dummies. So you'll hit your Fellstorm in AoE, and you're going to be hitting Handicle Dan. And that'll do cleave damage around your current target. Uh, and then once you've got... You know, a lot of imps out, maybe things that are about half health-ish, you're just going to hit implode and they're just going to do a ton of AoE damage there. So you just kind of go from, you know, you see like my damage breakdown, I hit an implosion once, did 29k, you know, that's most of the, more than the fell storm, you know, by a lot. So, but yeah, that's uh, just covering a bit of, um what we've got here on the beta for the uh, Demonology Warlock. I'll go ahead and make a video for the other two as well. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Later, everybody.